Hey guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about how narcissists um, do not want you to be thinking around them. So, uh, you know, something um, recently, ASSC Direct actually did a video on this, so he talked about like your um, intelligence being a threat to them which is absolutely true. It's a threat to nurses. Um, but so one of the things I've really noticed around them a lot is that, um, they'll, you know, say things like when I'm around them, like they'll all say the same thing because as we know, they all operate out of the same playbook of abuse, right? So it's like, they're just clones of each other. Like they're reading from the same script. In other words, so they'll say things around me like, um, what are you thinking about? Why are you thinking so much? And just all these like really sarcastic, like rude, arrogant, like kind of insinuations when I'm out with them. Like, why does it matter that I'm thinking a lot? Like, why, do, why does it matter like what I'm thinking? So they'll say like all these rude kind of like probing uh questions to me so that just tells you right there that they really don't want you thinking because they know that people who are uh dynamic thinkers and um able to think outside of the box creatively and who can like kind of look at all angles of a situation and who are very sharp witted like they are very threatened by people like me because they know that someone like me can easily kind of like outmaneuver their manipulations and their mental gymnastics and kind of cut right to the heart of the issue and like get right to the core of what it is, you know, that's going on around me. So this is very threatening to them because like I said, they um, really, truly hate people who use their God-given intelligence and who are kind of like truth seekers like myself. Like they don't like, okay, they hate people who are transparent and straightforward and clear in their communication, but they also really like that because they know that someone who is very transparent, forthcoming, uh, and clear in their communication is also someone they think, they think this, who can be easily manipulated because they're kind of putting all their cards on the table right away, so to speak. So they're like, you know, coming forward and just like, hey, here I am, like here, you know, this is who I am, uh, this is what I think, you know, and they're kind of like laying all the cards out so you, so that narcissist can kind of see your, your, all your cards on the table, so to speak. So they kind of think in their minds, well, you're showing me all your cards, you know, you're being upfront and transparent and, um, like just being forward and kind of sharing, you know, what's on your mind. So they kind of see that as like, mm, that's something to be manipulated. Like you are someone to be manipulated because you're being, like I said, uh, forthcoming and straightforward and honest. So like, they twist and bastardize everything that is a good uh, human quality, right, to have. If you're honest, they're like, oh, well, you're not dishonest and sly and sneaky, so therefore you must not be as intelligent as me. Because as you know, you know, they're constantly manipulating others and they're constantly thinking in terms of manipulating. So the way they see it is, they've never been honest a day in their lives with themselves or anyone else. So they see that as a weakness um, when actually it's not. But like I said, with narcissists, as we know, everything has to be flipped upside down and inside out with them. So everything like think when you think of them, these crazy subspecies, we have to think in terms of reversing everything we once thought was true when it comes to them. So with them, when they communicate, it's all lies. There's nothing honest coming out of their mouth. Um, 
when they say I love you, they actually mean I hate you. I hate your fucking guts. Um, everything with them, you have to like reverse and flip on its head. It's an ass backwards, like backwards reality that they live in. Um, so it has to be uh, reversed. Everything that they say and do is just the exact opposite. So if they tell you like, I will never uh, lie to you or cheat on you. That's the first thing they're going to do when they get the chance. <laughs> um, because they don't care, you know. As we know, they don't have any um, empathy or regard for you. So, this is why, you know, I always stress that when it comes to uh, normal human interactions, like, these do not apply to narcissists. And borderlines and other personality disordered dumb fucks like these natural rules of human engagement do not apply to them because they will flip everything and manipulate it and twist it around to their own benefit so yeah um they really do not like articulate clear uh communicators um People who are thoughtful in their communication and expression. People who are interesting and dynamic. As I've said, creative. Uh, you have, you're just a very uh, unique kind of like, just different kind of individual. And you think for yourself and you think outside the box. So these are all the things they don't like because they're not like that. They are collectivist thinkers. They're not individualists. Um, they just kind of go with what everyone else wants and thinks, and they just do things just because everyone else is doing them, and so they feel like because they can only reference themselves and they can't reference anything outside themselves because everything revolves around I with them, which is themselves, their own fragile, you know, demented egos, and so, like, um, everything references to that 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 central point in them so basically in their minds they're constantly thinking i me 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 i so it's constantly like they don't they don't think about the other person and their perspective or put themselves in the other person's shoes so if they if if you're like well, you know, I don't know about that whole life, like, with getting married and, you know, having kids in a white picket fence that just doesn't seem like my future, you know, I'm someone I like to, to travel a lot, I like to travel uh, spontaneously on a whim, I like to really live life with exuberance and vivacity, they would just think of that and be like, well, everybody else is doing this, everybody else is getting married and starting a family and living in this nice suburb with a white picket fence so why aren't you doing that and they'll say like i'm doing that so you should be doing that so this is something they're constantly critical of the way that other people like express themselves and live their lives uh they will be extremely judgmental of anyone outside themselves because they're constantly complaining as we know and criticizing everyone around them so in other words, if you don't do what they're doing or what they think you should be doing, then it's a it's you're wrong. Then it, you're a problem. Um. So it's like just so they they basically think like because I'm doing this, you should be doing this, and you should be living your life this way because I am. So remember, like they're the sun, the moon, and the stars. Everything revolves around them. They're the center of everyone's universe. They're so overdramatic, I swear to God. So they're the center of the universe, in other words. So they are the be-all, end-all judge of the universe. That's what they are. So everything has to be decided by them and only them, which is really disgusting, actually, to think that way, which they do. So... Yeah, I mean, so an example of this, I was talking to one malignant narcissist um, in my work, and I was basically talking about, like, how, you know, I like to um, 
kind of spend money on, um, you know, like traveling and doing all kinds of like creative endeavors. And then she's like talking about how she just bought this new Audi like SUV and I'm just like, oh, it's really boring. And then um, she was just like, well, that's because you're so different, Blossom. And I was like, no, that's just the way I choose to live my life at this moment. Like, you know, so they are like mercilessly constantly judging everyone around them. But when you judge them and you're like, uh, I think I made some like underhanded comment about her being a gold digger or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and oh my God, it's just... It was just full on, but, um, because, you know, like, the thing is, when it comes to them, you really have to fight fire with fire, and it sounds petty, it sounds like, oh my god, no, just take the high road, be an adult, be mature, and all that. Sure, yeah, you can be that way when it comes to normal individuals, but when you're dealing with a demented, demonic, demonically possessed, um, empty sack of organs... You need to be strategic in your thinking. You need to be military in your thinking. You need to be constantly on your toes, constantly doing mental gymnastics to figure out what's their next move, what's my next move. You know, thinking in passive-aggressive terms, unfortunately, thinking in terms of manipulation because you have to be able to outmaneuver them. That's the only way to outmaneuver a narcissist is, unfortunately, to think like them. It sucks because normal people don't want to have to think and behave like them, but you have to if you are going to come out, you know, unscathed from an interaction with one of these fiends. So, hang on guys, I gotta take my gum out. So, yeah, uh, basically, um, they despise anything that is, like, seen as an admirable human quality, like, being courageous, being brave, uh, being smart, um, being caring, being thoughtful, being positive, being lively, being, uh, like, full of energy and um, curious about others and the world around you and they just kind of see that as like oh my god like why are you this way I mean I had uh, some toxic fren uh, frenemies in my life like even months ago like six months ago or whatever that I got rid of and I feel so much better now that I've gotten rid of those worthless uh, frenemies but um yeah, I mean, sometimes even communicating with them, I look back now at how toxic those interactions were, and I was around them for, you know, a good amount of years, and now looking back, I think, oh my god, like, I really took the trash out, because when I would talk with them, like, it would basically be like, I would tell them about a bad experience that happened to me, for example, someone, like, you know, an instance where I had been harassed or whatever or something bad happened and they would look at me and just like, they said something like, oh my God, well, that, thank God that didn't happen to me. So you see, everything gets referenced back to themselves. It's not like a normal human response with them where they look at you and they're like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. That's terrible. I'm sorry that happened to you. Like, it's not like that with them. They will look at you and be like, oh, well, but, oh my god, what if that happened to me? Like, they're not thinking about you because they don't give a shit about you. So that's why uh, I'm really glad I cut ties with those toxic individuals. And I was totally right. I was totally in the right when I cut ties with them because they really showed their true colors then because um, the whole thing, although all the dynamics going on between myself and them were very fake, very phony, and uh, just did not feel natural to me. And there were instances like where they really trespassed uh, very important boundaries for me. So that right there in itself is just unacceptable. So yeah, um, sometimes, you know, in life you have to basically, um, as we all know, you, you know, you have to be able to sever ties, even if it's like with family or... Um, whatever like if they're toxic to you if they are uh draining and um negative a negative influence in your life like you really do not need that um to kind of retract and pull away from your uh, positive influence so um 
you have to be strong enough and brave enough to be able to cut off those ties so that you can live in your full uh, authentic self instead of being um, weighed down by those anchors, so to speak, um, those negative anchors. Um, so I, you know, and another, I want to add another point to this video. Um, I, you know, one of the first signs I believe now that I'm really kind of, in most cases, I'm thinking about it is when you are around a narcissist, one of the first signs will be that you start to feel drained, like you you walk away from that interaction and you are just completely exhausted after just being around them for like a few minutes. So that tells you what you're dealing with. You may not, they might not have necessarily done anything yet. I mean, they're, they're probably will have already shown you some red flags within, you know, the first like maybe a couple of interactions. But you will definitely feel like that drain feel. It just it, it it science cannot explain it. I mean, it's just like you walk away and you feel like you haven't slept in months, and that is just not normal. That is just unexplainable. That is just dis I mean there's no rationale, there's no reasonable explanation as to how you can feel so drained and exhausted around a single individual. It doesn't make any sense. So it tells you that they are purposely retracting from people's energy around them. They are feeding off of the energy of others around them, which is disgusting. And people might say, oh, that's an unconscious process that's going on beneath the conscious. Sure, but this individual, they are aware of what they're doing because they obviously are a narcissist or a toxic manipulator and they are purposely draining the life force of those around them. So and they're aware of it and they're proud of it. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going around draining the life energy from other people. What are you going to do about it? I mean, so um, the... And you can tell because when you get far away from them, you're like, oh my god, I'm starting to feel better. Like, so when I was, um, yeah, around narcissists in the past, like, that's one of the things I noticed. I was just around them for like a day or two and I felt so drained, so exhausted. The life was just leaving my body. It's just, it's unexplainable in, in uh, you know, like metaphysical terms. It... So the physics of this i mean i have talked with shamans and they have told me things like basically the narcissist has like this energetic cord right that they are kind of implanting in you it's like some kind of i want to say suction right it sounds so creepy but it's true so they put this like energetic kind of like suction into you and they're basically, from there, extracting all of that um, energy, or what we call in psychology, um, narcissistic supply, um, energy, you know, attention, focus, all that. So they are draining that from you. And um, it's like these tentacles they put in you. And when you get away from that it's still like those hooks are still in you those tentacles those energetic tentacles so to speak are still in you and it's like they they need to be pulled out by someone they need to be you're still being drained even after you escape them for months i mean when i left the last one uh, and i was only around them for like four and a half months five months um so for months after that, I was still feeling drained every day, like just exhausted. Like it's like coming off of heroin by yourself. Like it's, it's horrendous. And you just like the, the, the draining that's happening, the, the energy, it's still draining from you. It's like those, those hooks are still in you. It's so disturbing and haunting. And, um, um, months I was just totally exhausted I knew I needed to be alone during that time because I'm someone who uh in order to recharge and to be able to be on my best sort of energetically speaking and uh 
mentally and emotionally and everything, I need like that alone time to really regenerate and recharge and center myself, ground myself to come back to reality. And so I will just kind of like isolate and lick my wounds and uh, just sort of isolate for months. And they say like, usually men do that, which I mean, I know that they do, but I also do that as like an, an introvert and an INFJ. I feel like I really need to do that a lot because I felt in those instances so drained that I just needed only me time, like literally only me around myself doing, you know, um, creative stuff or relaxing or trying to, you know, recharge. So that's for, that was for months and it was just and I can't think about anybody else. I can't be there for anyone else. I can't be present for anyone else because, because of tr my, you know, I'm just trying to recharge basically. Um, so I wanted to say another sign. We talked about the overthinking. So they'll, they'll always say comments about how you're overthinking. You shouldn't think so much and the energy draining and the boundary crossing that's number three the boundary crossing so they don't respect boundaries as you guys know they do not respect boundaries and they don't believe in boundaries they don't even have any boundaries for themselves that's why they can go out and do anything and uh, behave any kind of way and they don't feel any um, reflection on they don't reflect on their behavior they don't self-reflect or self-analyze instead what they do is they point the finger at everyone around them and they're critical of everyone around them because that is projection coming from them that is oh my god look at everyone around them they're like I know that, you know, this person's a liar and a cheater and they'll just like sit there and point the finger at everyone because they are shifting the guilt and the blame and the shame from themselves onto everyone around them. And that's the toxic projection where they are basically insinuating that everyone else around them is the bad person and the one going around doing all of these things when really it's them. So they don't stop to self-analyze because if they were to stop for like five minutes and self-reflect on their own actions and behaviors, they would probably go into a psychotic, um, uh, depressive state and they may need to be locked up in, you know, the insane asylum for a while because they, it is basically um, impossible for them to to self-analyze, self-correct, self-reflect because like they they shift the blame on everyone around them and they accuse random people like strangers around them in a delusional, paranoid, persecutory way that everyone else around them is doing all the things they're doing, right? So as you know, like if you're with a narcissist and you're dating them, they'll immediately tell you that they know you're cheating and they know you're lying and that you are doing all these things that really they're doing the whole time behind your back since when you first meet them. So these are, you know, all the things that um, they, they do and that is to get the focus off of them. Remember, they are cowards. They are abject cowards. They are very fearful and they don't want people doing the same things to them that they're going out doing to others on a constant basis. Um, they're going out purposely targeting individuals, sabotaging them, destroying their lives intentionally. And they know from the minute they first meet the person, they're like, mm, if only you knew what I have coming for you because you would be running the fuck away from me because... If you only had any clue about what I'm about to do to you. And that's the, I mean, this is what they're thinking when they first meet a new, fresh uh, target and someone they're hunting because they're predators for a relationship, which really what that is, is just a con game that they're running to pull someone into a false delusion that they are so into them and so in love and they would move mountains to be with you and you're the best thing since key lime pie and um you know that's just all this bs this smoke that they're blowing up your ass basically and that's how it works with them and that's how they 
This is the main way, actually, that narcissists, borderlines, and psychopaths are able to draw someone in to their web is through uh, placating their egos through through um, conditioning your ego. So how they do this is they get a hold of your ego, right? So if you're someone who bases, and you know, we're all guilty of this, and I used to do this in the past. Um, when I was like a little bit younger, I kind of thought, oh my God, like everything has to be based on my ego. Everything has to be based on um, getting the attention and getting the validation and um, getting the accolades and being admired and being, a, you know, kind of notice basically but that's the very thing that a predator will play on with you because for them it's fun it's like oh, I see this person and they are constantly they seem like they kind of really need to live for the the attention or the the likes or the uh the attention from the opposite sex like I said or they you know they'll kind of get in there and they'll just sort of like weave themselves around in your life and on your social media and try to figure out what your vulnerabilities are and by vulnerabilities I mean they are trying to assess how much you live through your ego because that's the only way they can get a hold of you really is through trapping you through your own ego and by doing this I mean how they do this, I mean, is um, they assess how much you live through your ego. Like, so if, like I said, if you're someone you're so obsessed with your looks or like you have to look so perfect or you need so much, so many likes from the opposite sex or you need this kind of attention, they really um, know that they can totally like put you in this sort of ego strangulation, so to speak, so that... Um, they can kind of give you what you need for your ego. Um, so if it's like the attention or the the praise or telling you what you want to hear, like, oh my God, you're so brave and so different and so intelligent and such a good this and that. And yeah, you know, like when you meet people, you know, like normal people, they give compliments, whatever, here and there. Sure, that's fine. But this is like really overdone as you know you've encountered with narcissists and borderlines this is extremely overdone to the point where they'll be like you're perfect you're everything I've ever wanted um and all these lies right like oh my god you are just like the best at this and that and like you look amazing and just like it's just it's so fake it's so fake and so phony and like you will feel it. You will be like, mm, nah, this, this doesn't really feel like. And those are the first, those are some of the first red flags that you know you're dealing with someone who's a bullshitter, big time bullshitter, manipulator, liar, deceiver, um, someone who's coming in to uh, use, abuse, and take from you and give nothing in return. So, um, yeah, and, um, that's that's what they play off of is your ego. So once you have been through this with a psychopath and you have been targeted, you've been through the all the cycles of abuse, the idealization, the devaluation and then finally the discard. Once you have been through all of those stages, the three stages of the cycle that they put individuals through, once you've been through that, you kind of realize your, your ego goes through a transformation when you go through this event. Um, and people who haven't been through this may not be able to totally relate to you when you come out of it. It's just kind of like someone who goes into war, right? Of um, A soldier. And when they come out of the war, it's like they look around and they're like, Oh my God, I can't relate to anyone except fellow soldiers and veterans who've been through this as well. And that's why they feel so isolated and so depressed when they come back from the battlefield because they're like, I can't relate to the normal world anymore. I can't relate to people who haven't seen this, who haven't been through this, who haven't felt this. And it's so true because once you come out of it, you're just like, 
like I said, your ego goes through a transformation and it um, essentially it fractures. Your ego breaks. It just disintegrates right before your eyes and you will see it. And it's just like, whoa, like your ego literally dies in front of you. It go, your ego goes through a death. And once that happens, you, you will never be the same. And this happened to me, but in a way it's bad, but you really miss who you used to be. But in a way it's good because now you know that you are not going to be operating solely out of your ego base because of what's happened it's been destroyed and shattered by the situation of the abuse and and then finally um the discard when the narcissist leaves you at your worst moment like they lure you into a foreign country and then they abandon you overnight and this this happens all the time so um I mean, I just, I, I'm just thinking about, it. I don't know how the fuck this is not a public health crisis. Like, so many things in the world are a public health crisis. But this, people are just like, oh, well, that's just, you know, that's just a bad breakup. That's just a bad relationship. That's just, and all this fucking gaslighting and all this bullshit people talk, you know, they, they kind of write it off. But this, this stuff, this, this should be, like... One of the number one public health crises going on in the world right now because you have people going out and going in these situations and some a lot of them don't come out. They don't survive this, guys. So that's, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm talking as a survivor because I've made it through multiple situations like this and come out and survived. But there are so many that do not. Their first encounter with a psychopath and they do not come out alive. They do not survive it. So, um, basically, this is just, um, I mean, what's going on now, it's just, it's, it's really out of hand in most of societies around the world, and something needs to be done, because these individuals are predators, and they are going around getting, like, you know, luring people into foreign countries, stealing from them, you know, draining their finances, um conning them into false romantic relationships so that they can steal from them and bamboozle them and manipulate them. I mean, this is happening on a domestic level, but also on a, even, even in the greater scheme of things, you know, you have the psychopaths up in the upper echelons of society who are pulling the strings, making the decisions which only benefit themselves and don't benefit the rest of society. Because if you, you know, look into the core of the psychology of a psychopath, everything they do is only in reference to themselves. So every little action that they do, everything they say has to be only for themselves. And this is why when you have individuals like this running a society who have no empathy, um, they can't actually consider what anyone else needs or what their needs are or what they, you know, want. And they don't care either on top of that. So... You have the people, and this isn't just selfishness, this is malignant selfishness. This is pathological selfishness. So, um, yeah, uh, this, this is definitely a public health crisis, and people just are not taking this as seriously as they should they're just kind of writing it off like well you know it just sounds like you had a bad deal you you know you you got dealt some bad cards and you know just let it go just move on all this gaslighting you know invalidating your um experiences you know saying you know just arrogant rude things like oh just move on just let it go just move and it's like yes you know eventually people who have survived this they do, do get on with their lives that's fine but that's not the point what's going on here is you know, all of these um, sort of um, just these 
these situations and this is happening by the millions and uh, people going through these experiences and um, and ending up you know dead because of it because um, or they commit suicide and by dead I mean you know um, narcissists are the ones who will hire a hitman to take you out for insurance money they're the ones who do this um, they're the ones who poison your food gradually every day, you know, little bit by little bit. They'll poison your food of the the food of their uh, husband or wife. This is what they do. This is who they are. So this is what we're dealing with. And people don't want to wake up to this. They're they're just like, oh well, at the at the core of everyone, there's a little bit of good. But what I've learned based on my experiences with them is that no, there are many individuals who have zero good inside of them. They are rotten to the core. They have no good inside and they are not redeemable. They are reprobates of society and people don't want to acknowledge this. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to live in that truth because that would be too scary for them. They don't want to go around thinking we are surrounded by all of these predators hiding behind a believable social mask, but it's so true. They are in every faucet of society, in religion, in churches. Uh, they've taken over churches. They've taken over the dating scene. They've taken over uh, families. They've taken over politics. They've taken over law. They've taken over everything they can get their greedy fucking hands on. And they are destroying everything because this is the core of what they are. They destroy. They don't build. They don't create. They don't improve. They don't uh, change things for the better. They destroy purposely just for their own selfish gain. And they are like suicide bombers. They will take anyone out just to get to them, even if that means they themselves will be destroyed. So this is how, this is what we're dealing with. It's really scary. So if they're jealous of somebody or they're envious of somebody for whatever qualities, maybe um, looks or, or whatever it is they have that they want, they will go after that individual, target them, and take them out, even if that means destroying themselves. And it's really scary what we're dealing with. And I just wish this was taken more seriously in society and that people acknowledged it because... They probably know an individual or two they've ran into that's like this, and they. But if they haven't actually lived the experience in some sort of a friendship or a family relationship or romantic relationship or whatever, they haven't actually lived this. They're not gonna actually know in detail, but they can always, you know, read about it, research it, watch YouTube videos. You know, there's all kinds of resources out there that they can reach out to to understand more. Because the more educated that society becomes on this topic, um, the less that narcopaths are going to be able to bamboozle and manipulate people um, which is why this should be you know taught in schools like a mandatory formal education just like you know the people uh, prince principals and uh, governors okay governors of a district of a school district require students to learn certain subjects like biology or or algebra or whatever this should be a requirement like learning about pathological relationships and how to spot the red flags of a how to decipher the red flags of one of these types of personality disorder predators if everyone can have a formal education in this this is just going to really help i believe uh all of society in the in the long run and but the only problem is you're going to have so much pushback and, and fight from the parents and the um, even the kids.